Absolutely. It made me think of y'all this morning, so I had to share. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So y'all today, um, we're going to talk, we're going to continue on. So we've been, you know, talking about this word and how it moves through us, moves through our spirit, how God designed it to move through us so that the word becomes flesh, right? That's, that's manifestation. The word becomes flesh. Um, and I'm going to read, let's see. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, got it, y'all. I'm sorry. My, um, give me one second because my everywhere I put my notes is this morning as I was trying to finalize my notes. Um, <laughs> every time I was you know, and I know everybody talks about me and having my iPad all the time and not paper, right? So everything I had typed disappeared, <laughs> of course, right? And uh, and so anyway, I'm trying to, I, I was able to pull most of it back, but. <laughs> that, that means it's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, and I just sat there laughing. I said, okay, that's fine. You want to disappear? I still know what I'm going to say. How about that? <laughs> yeah, but um, but I want to start off and I, and, and I actually, let's start off with John 1 and 1 and 1 because this, this was in several years ago, couple years ago, actually, when I was, be, you know, really studying his word, God showed me about putting my name in the scripture. And the first time he did that was with this scripture right here. And uh, John 1 and 1. Um, and let's see, I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the Passion Translation. And it was really when he did that, when he told me that I was kind of taken aback because this passage is talking about Jesus, right? And I was like, Lord, there's no way I can put my name where Jesus' name is supposed to be, <laughs> right? But he said, no, you and I are one, aren't we? Yes, yes. And so he said, whatever is true of him is true of you. And so this, but then he showed me that this particular passage is really all about manifestation. And it says in the, be, in the very beginning, the living expression was already there. And in some translations, it says the word. Okay. So the word meaning Jesus, okay, was there in the beginning now. And I just, the passage translation, I love that it says the living expression, <laughs> you know, so in the beginning, the living expression was already there. In the beginning, Anel was already there. In the beginning, Lakita was there. Dierica was there. Natalie was there. You know, one thing that God said to me again, as I began studying all of this, and y'all, we are talking about revelation right here, okay? <laughs> We've moved from illumination. We, we went over meditation yesterday. And right now we're talking about, me, uh, about revelation. He said to me, you were with me in the garden. This is why my sheep know my voice. He said, you've heard it before. You've heard it before. When God created mankind, he is not still in the business. He's not still up there creating spirits to bring down here on earth. God created mankind in the beginning. <laughs> and when he told me that, I was like, what? Wow, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, and that just lets you know his love for you. He's like, you were all with me. You were with me. You were in me in the garden. You know, and so in the beginning, you were there. And it says, and the living expression was with God, yet fully God. There was, they were together face to face in the very beginning. 
So, so he says you and he face to face in the very beginning and through his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things for nothing has existence apart from him. And so it, what he's saying through you, all things are made through you, all things are made. Nothing in your world exists apart from you. This is a, he's like, this is the formula of manifestation right here. <laughs> Through you, everything is made. There's nothing that exists apart from you. Life came into being because of you. And your life is a light for all humanity. God did not, got, did God not tell us in his word that life and death is in the power of whose tongue? Mine. So I either create, I create life in my life. I create life through you. Life is created and you are a light for all humanity. And it says, and this, and, and a nail is the light that bursts through gloom, the light that darkness cannot diminish. Crystal is the light that bursts through and the darkness cannot diminish it. And it says, uh, suddenly a man appeared who was sent from God and, and let's, let's look at hmm, the word. It says, now I'm going to drop down to, let's see, 14. And so the word became flesh. The living expression became man and lived among us. And we gazed upon the splendor of his glory. The glory of the one and only who came from the father, overflowing with tender mercy. That part right there, the word became flesh. The word became flesh. The word becomes flesh. And you can see that in front of you. It's saying you behold the splendor, you behold the glory. So you and the word have to be this right here, one. And that word becomes flesh. And that's manifestation. So, you know, he when he first told me that, again, it was kind of hard for me to wrap my head around. But what I'm talking about right here is not, this is what we're going to start off with today in talking about revelation. <clears throat> is that, you know, revelation, if you look at the definition of it, it's defined as a surprising fact or event that makes you look at things in a new way. Makes you look at things in a new way. That's what revelation is. Um, it says something disclosed, disclosure, a striking disclosure as of something not previously known or realized. Revelation comes from that, from the word reveal. So reveal would, in, would, would tell us that it was there, we just didn't see it, right? It was there, we just didn't see it. Just like Elijah and his servant, when he asked God to open his servant's eyes so that he could see the spiritual, God revealed that, that was revealed to him. They were always there. He just didn't see it. And that's what revelation is for us. So as we start with illuminating, so the word is illuminated to us, meaning I can see, okay, this makes sense. I, I can get that, but that's still in the head space. That's still in the kind of, you know, the mental ascent version. Meditation now allows us to start painting a picture of what this verse is talking about. Revelation then comes in and says, that belongs to me. I see this picture now, and now I can see what I'm looking at in a whole different light. I can see something about my situation I didn't see before. Revelation does that for us. And it's very close to what we were talking about. Remember about a week or so ago, God had us talking about perception, 
right? And, and how, what you perceive a thing to be. That belief, we have to go deeper than just acknowledging it, but we have to perceive what God is doing. Being able to perceive something that's not readily visible to the naked eye, but perceive it in the spirit, right? And so there's, when you look at, when you look in the Bible and it talks about uh, God's word, it, when you, when there are two words that are used for the word, word. Okay. And if you've been in church any length of time, you probably have heard these two terms. You've heard logos and you've heard rhema. Okay. Logos is a word that is translated as word. And that word logos word actually means is more around the written word. It's scripture. You know, it's the scripture as it is, as we just read right? That's, that's logos word. A rhema word is designed, it's, it's uh, actually defined more as it means an utterance um, on a particular matter or topic. It's something that has been uttered either in the past or the present or by a living entity. And so when we talk about rhema word, we're talking about God's spoken utterance to you about a logos word. Okay, so it's taking what's written and taking it further in. Don, I want you to use this here. Okay, um, give you a case in point. Let me see. Um, I, and I just thought about this. I don't have a scripture. Hold on. Um, can't remember. The So when I was... Um, when I was, you know, we were working on clearing the land, right? That y'all, you know, y'all that I've talked about. Um, Psalm 16 and five, okay, uh, five through six. Let me go there. <clears throat> All right, let's look at, it says, I'm gonna look at, Hmm. Okay, so in Psalms uh, 16 and six, uh, five and six, and this is the New Living Translation, it says, Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. All right, and there's, uh, I don't know if it's the, is it the King James Version? Yes, the King James Version of six says, the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. So when I, when we were getting, we were going to have to do a boundary survey. That was the first step. And this was the scripture that God gave me to speak over that. Because I told y'all as we were doing this, we were doing this as God was like, you're not getting any debt. You're not going to use any money you have already. You're going to do this as I say, do it. <laughs> Right. And so he had me quoting that scripture. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. And that's what I that's what I was told to do. That was a spoken word. This this verse right here, when it was written, wasn't specifically talking about my piece of land. But yet again, it is talking about my piece of land. <laughs> right. This is what we mean by rhema. God will bring forth a word that now, as you have meditated on that word and you that word you've chewed on and it becomes part of you, now he can use that as a right now in this situation, here's what we build from. The word becomes our foundation. And, um, and so if we look at Matthew 4 and 4, Uh, on the New Living Translation, it says, Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the Passion Translation says he answered, the scriptures say this is the Jesus was being tempted by the devil at this point. And this is how he answers the devil. Bread alone will not satisfy because the devil is basically telling him, why don't you make yourself some food? I know you hungry. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? <laughs> and Jesus says, bread alone will not satisfy, but true life is found in every word which constantly goes forth from God's mouth. You see, <laughs> what he is just, <laughs> excuse me, what he has just said here is that we live from our revelation. We live from our revelation. We live from our revelation. He says here that you live not just by bread, but by every word that is constantly coming from my mouth. I'm always speaking your ability to take the revelation from that and move that into reality is what you live from. And so if I don't have a, if I don't take the time to meditate on the word, I don't get to live out that word. If I don't have the revelation of how that word is speaking to me, I don't live it out. It's, it's case in, I mean, just think about debt. Deuteronomy says you're going to be the lender and not the borrower. You never have to borrow. That's what the message translation says. You won't ever have to borrow. But if I don't have a revelation that I don't, I do not need debt in my life, what do I do? I live in debt. I can only live out of my revelation. So I can agree with the scripture and I can quote the scripture. We don't live based off of what we can quote. We live out of our revelation. There is a difference. And so this is, again, those points where we have to push ourselves as Christians to go back and relook at the word I can quote versus the word that I live out of. The word, that word's revelation to me. And it's okay if we're not there yet. Just acknowledge you're not there yet and let's keep going, right? We don't stay satisfied with not being there yet. So we live from our revelation. Um, Ephesians 6, 17 through 18, and this is the Passion Translation. Natalie spoke about this scripture yesterday. Um, I'm just doing the last part. It's talking about taking on the armor of God. Well, when it talks about the sword, Okay, this says embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance, like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. Man, I mean, if we could just get this right here, <laughs> like a helmet <laughs> to protect your thoughts from lies. And it says, and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. So see, he is, this scripture is not just talking about the sword of the spirit is not just the word itself, the written word. It is your revelation of that word that you use in that moment of the fight. It's the word that God brought back to you and said, this belongs to you. Your revelation. So it is that word that's used there for word is rhema word. So it's not just the sword of the spirit. The sword is not just pulling out a scripture that I can quote. It is the scripture that God spoke to me and that I accept and, and, and perceive to be true for me. The way that, I, that way that he said it to me now paints a different picture in my situation, in my circumstance, and I can see only that. Revelation changes your perception. It changes what you're looking at. <clears throat> there is no, no word of God. Luke 1 and 37 in the Passion Translation says, not one promise from God is empty of power. Now, most other translations use not one word of God. Okay, again, this is a place where rhema word is used. But it says not one, not one word or promise of God, not one spoken word of God is empty of power for nothing is impossible with God. 
What what scripture was that? Luke 1 37. For not one word. The Rhema word carries power. The Rhema word carries power. And it's there's not one word that cannot come true. It it's saying to us, it's this is um, you know, using uh, helping us to understand the fact that word is spirit. If word was inanimate, it would not have power. If word was just word, it wouldn't have power, but word is living. Your word is living. <clears throat> Now, if you look at verse 38, so, so this scripture, this piece of scripture comes from when the angel visited Mary and told her that she was going to have a child. And so the very next verse, verse 38, then Mary responded saying, this is amazing. I will be a mother for the Lord. As his servant, I accept whatever he has for me. May everything you have told me come to pass. And the angel left her. This is our very picture of how we respond to the word of God. This is what Mary said. Hey, her total perspective changed because she did ask first. She was like, okay, well, how's this going to happen? Exactly. Cause I'm, I don't, I'm a virgin. <laughs> okay. You know, so now she's not, it wasn't in doubt. She's just kind of asking what's the next step, so to speak. Right. And so when he said, hey, listen, not one word of God, God's word conceives by the Holy Spirit. We see Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit. Okay. But her reaction was a change in her perception. No longer was she a, this young girl who, you know, was not a mother. Now she calls herself a mother after the word her perception changed her perception changed this is what revelation does to us it changes how we talk about ourselves if you have the revelation that you're an rvp already then you're not trying to get to rvp <laughs> I am. I act as if they just put my plaque together right now. <laughs> right? It changes. Revelation will change how you talk about yourself. You know, I, I, um, my sister, one of my sisters, uh, she, she's had this saying for a long time. And uh, this is the sister. She's the most dramatic of us all. This woman, she would put on one woman shows when we were kids. I mean, she just, she had all these characters. She would act out all the time. She lived in a whole nother world. We would think, we think that we talk about, you know, things in our family and, you know, stuff we've done. She has a whole nother recollection than anybody else. We're like, did we really grow up in the same house? Like, I just, we don't know where you were at the time. <laughs> her, her, But the thing is, her reality, her perception, her imagination was always somewhere else. And she has this saying, you know, around, <laughs> yeah, Dre, I think everybody has a sister like that. Don't they? <laughs> but she would say, you know, when it comes to things not meeting her standard, she'll say, I am a queen in a kingdom far greater than any fairy tale. Okay. That's what she says. I am a queen in a kingdom. I am a queen in a kingdom. And if it don't match up, like she's a queen in a kingdom, that's all she says. I am a queen in a kingdom. And she lives there, honey. Don't come to her with nothing less than what belongs to a queen in a kingdom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and so, you know, but she lives there reality to her and that girl no you the you would just all the things that people are like now how did that happen how did you get that how did you do this how 
because she's a queen in the kingdom. <laughs> Revelation will change how you talk about yourself. And so if I am meditating on a particular word until that light bulb flips and I see myself now here and I, my perception is totally different and I talk about myself differently, I haven't quite made it to the point of the revealed word to me, okay, of being able to ha own that. I got to have the picture and the picture should include me. And nobody can tell me any different. Okay, you hold that picture such that you can't tell me. Uh, think about in terms of the, the uh, example we just used about debt. Okay, maybe you've just, you have, re it's been revealed to you now. Maybe you know, okay, no more debt for me. You might still be in debt right now physically, but in your mind, you're debt free. And anybody, any credit card offer, anything, you don't even, you toss it to the side. I don't even consider it. We're not even thinking about it. I'm debt free. And you can't tell me I'm not debt free. Right? It's the, your identity. Mary says, I am the, the mother of the Lord. She was not yet pregnant. She didn't have no bump in her belly. And matter of fact, she after she said, well, everything you've told me, may everything you told me come to pass. Some versions say, be it unto me. Your identity changes in revelation. And I, I know, again, like some of this stuff, I'm kind of hitting redundantly, but it that is part of helping you to see the level of revelation it takes to move to this next piece of legislation that we're talking about and to move into a space of manifestation. Okay. It's, I see myself, this belongs to me. You can't tell me any different. Anything else is a lie. Anything else is a lie. And I don't consider lies. So I do, I stop pondering on the lie of the situation. I stop meditating on the lie of the situation, the things that the enemy wants me to think about. I don't do that anymore. I'm a queen in a kingdom. Right? <clears throat> the Bible says that if we use his spoken word, that that person that uses his spoken word is given the spirit without measure. Okay. Uh, let's look at, hold on, <clears throat> this is one of those places it tried to, uh, okay, John 3 and 34, uh, I'm going to look at the New Living Translation. And this, again, is a scripture talking about Jesus, but it is the same is true for us. It says, for he is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God gives him the spirit without limit. This And this, again, this words used here is rhema word. You are sent by God. Speaking that rhema word invites the spirit without limits. And the spirit is our guarantee that we get what his word says. The spirit without limit is attached to your revelation of the word. Because out of your revelation, you speak. An unlimited spirit is attached to your revelation of the word, because out of your revelation, you speak. You're sent by God. You're sent by God for, and he speaks God's words. 
Lakita speaks God's words. For God has given her the spirit without limit. Good gracious. I got to say something. Yes. That's why the devil works so hard on us. I mean, the devil uses the very thing that God gave us the power to do so that we can meditate on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. That's why he's roaring like a lion. And that's how we know we're so close to our destiny and what God has promised us. Right. That's why he's always at work at our thoughts. Oh my goodness. Cause he doesn't want us to see the clear. Oh, I'm over here like feeling so. Oh. And, and I keep hearing it, but I love it because God is very intentional with the steps that we need to take mm -hmm. to guard to understand that we have all power in his whoo all right i i am i'm just i'm rambling but man, i'm telling <laughs> you good. thank you jesus you're good you're good amen amen the, the the enemy you're right he does not want you to know that this word can move through you in this way we get hung up in so many spaces see first of all if we're uh quick to lose focus we don't meditate on a word long enough to ever get to this point If you, if it ain't here in three days, we go put it up on a shelf and we blame it on God's timing. Now, not to say that there are things that yes, prophetically God has specific time and order and things like that. We know that, but what I'm saying is this, don't, don't get so complacent with his word, when his word has so much power and he wants you to move in that power, he specifically said it. That's why I'm leaving so that you can do greater works because of what we just read right here. The spirit without limits is yours. The spirit without limit is yours. Last couple of things. We see that <clears throat> the rhema word brings with it often instruction. Uh, Luke 5, 4 through 7 in the New Living Translation. This is, again, a familiar scripture. We go back to Peter a lot on, the, on his boat out there fishing, not catching anything. And it says um, in verse 4, when he had been, and I'm in the New Living, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked all night, all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their net was so full of fish that they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Rain a word that the word where Simon says we worked all night and didn't catch a thing. It says, but if you say so, and other translations again say, but at your word, that word is Rama there at your word, Rama, his spoken word brings instruction. So when God gave me the scripture to speak about the boundary lines for my land, he didn't just give it to me to say, use this as confirmation. I had to go speak that. I went to the land and I spoke that to my land. It was instruction. And no sooner had we done that, we get the survey done and the money to pay for it. <laughs> it was instruction at his word. Okay, Lord, <laughs> you know, what? It's instruction because his word has power. My, uh, the, his revelation to me is what I live off of. So the revelation that that scripture applied to my land carried with it the instruction to speak over that land. That's those words. I have the spirit now without limit. Those words spoken over the land 
And going back to what, what we see in John, or excuse me, in Luke with Mary, no word of God is empty of power. Y'all see how they're connected? Do we see how it's connected? Um, Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Uh, the, in the message translation says, God, our God, <clears throat> will take care of the hidden things, but the revealed things are our business. It's up to us and our children to attend to all the terms in this revelation. When you, when God reveals something to you, it is your responsibility now. Now, I not only do, I, I own that word, but I'm responsible for that word. I'm responsible to operate in that word. It says, if it's hidden from you, you're not responsible for it, but the revealed things are your business. That's what you're supposed to be walking in. It's up to us. And, I, and, and then again, God doesn't do anything just for you. It's generational. It's up to you. See, I, I pull my children in in every single piece of this process because they need to, one day I won't be here to tell this story. They got to be here to tell the story and operate further in what we have established in the revelation. Because see, ultimately this revelation should go higher the next generation. You're responsible for the revealed word. You live out of your revelation. And just to, to close it up here today, Psalms 19, seven through nine in the message translation, it says the revelation of God is whole and puts our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. <laughs> the decisions of God are accurate down to the nth degree. Everything, everything he reveals to us can be relied upon. Everything he reveals to us can be relied upon. Everything you, every revelation you get, you can own. It says his, those signs, those are the signposts. They're clear. They point out the right direction. They're right. They show you how to have joy. They're plain. God did not, I mean, you know, he did not ask me to go, go walk around to every surveying company here and get price quotes and bids and get there, get, do this and that. He asked me to go to the land and speak a scripture. His directions are easy. plain on the eyes it says his reputation he has not failed yet 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee so we got to take the word from the point of meditation and and meditation you might need to stay there for a little while there are, I am very careful as I am anything that I come to the point of declaring, which we're talking about when we talk about legislating, I don't say a word until I have that revelation has come to me. When I'm in meditation time on something, I stay right there and I really don't pray on it because I don't want to pull any doubt into my, my meditation of this. So I know I'm I know I'm working on it. I'm getting it. God's painting the picture. We're working together. I, I'm I'm holding on to this word because when I speak, it's gonna mean something. But I'm not gonna do that 
until that revelation has come to me, the clear picture that it belongs to me and it's mine and that it cannot ever end up any other way. There are no other options. So it's important to allow the word, the word's got to move through these stages in us come through the meditation point to this place of revelation where there is nothing else that exists but this word and this word can be relied upon and this word it belongs to Jacinta and it and it carries the specific instructions on what to do next for this manifestation that makes sense all right there we go we're gonna stop right there today <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I was going to be quiet, but I just, I can't because I really need to be quiet because I'm trying to sponge. But okay. <laughs> the what I just wrote down is the word becomes flesh. That was the main thing. And I mm -hmm. made a chart and it says for my illuminate, I can see mm -hmm. my next column says meditation. I will keep my soul in order, only letting in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. My revelation is in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I have been here, but I now have arrived. Mm -hmm. oh. so, that's, so I just created a new meditation, and I'm going to sit right there with that. Thank Amen. you so much. <laughs> Amen. That's good. That's good, Dierica. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Oh. Man, that's, that's, ooh, come on, De Erica. I like that. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, again, th this is just, this is just awesome to, to receive the, the word. And, and I'm sure it is, it has touched the hearts of everybody uh, right where you're at, not, not where Jacinta is at or, Anel or Lakita or Natalie, no, right where you're at. Mm -hmm. That's how God deals with us. He doesn't deal with us the same way. And so, you know, however God spoke to your heart, uh, you, you know, don't, don't look to the right, don't look to the left. You, mm -hmm. Just stay right where you are and let and let Holy Spirit just, just speak to your heart because he's speaking. And and I sure enough have received mm -hmm. the word, and now we're going to be in. We're man, the, girl. This is just good. This is just <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I don't know how you keep lining up with my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't, know. I don't know, but I mean, it's like, hey, okay, okay, Michelle, okay, you hearing? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, I'm doing. Uh, are you really doing, Michelle? And then just say, Michelle, you know you're not really, really doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you, <laughs> so it's like, oh, uh, well, I guess I could be doing mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and last night, he, he, he actually talked about, you know, that word that God will reveal to you and that you just stay there until that word speaks to you about your situation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Amen. Yep. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's it's oh. oh go ahead, Natalie. Go ahead. No, you could go because see, I'll say after. Oh no, I was just gonna say, so that that word, you know, in that meditation part, God is so excited to meet with you about that, you know, and to sit there and work with you. And you know, it's almost like I don't know, I don't, I don't know if we were if we were talking about it or it was on a training call about a kid with the training wheels you know, and like when they're trying to learn how to ride a bike, that's kind of meditation. We got the training wheels on. We see the bike. We know we can ride the bike. We got the training wheels on, right? And little by little, the meditation allows those training wheels to kind of come up and almost to where we don't need them anymore, right? And revelation, then Holy Spirit gets to let go of the bike and be like, okay, now take this word forward take this word and move on it in your life, right? So it's it's a progression. And this is why I said everything overarching of this, these are not just steps, but everything, what, what arcs over all of this is relationship. That's why God made the process the way it is because he wants to be in the middle of it. 
with us, right? Go ahead, Natalie. Well, um, it was actually something that kind of clicked for me today. I guess, well, you could say a revelation that I got during your um your message was um Ephesians one. Let me pull it up. Ephesians one and six. It says God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in heavenly realms in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. And I've always read it, and I, you know, you declare things over your life, like you said before getting the revelation. Mm -hmm. But then, like this right here, and I, I feel called to share because it might help somebody else. Is like we are there in that heavenly place yeah. with Jesus. So we're not, when we pray, when we declare, when, we're not doing it from like a earthly realm. So like yes. it brings more of a confidence, you know, when we get the revelation to yes. who we are yes. in Christ. Yes, yes, girl. Who yes. is it, Natalie? Yes. Girl, I got two pastors in the family. <laughs> She's the I second pastor up in yeah. here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's not me. That's God. <laughs> amen y'all working as one and i'm loving amen. it oh my god you know natalie one thing that we have said i think i have we have a, a a teaching that we did on an accelerate call but one thing and i use that scripture for that is that i say think from your throne you know that's good that's i like that i'm about to put that up somewhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> Think from your throne, because that's where you are. You are seated in heavenly places. Your perspective should be from there, right? In all things. So, amen. Amen. Oh, it's good. It's exciting. Man, Natalie, I'm going to go ahead and prepare you, okay? Because <laughs> you are now part of the, pro the, the tribe, right? Yes, thank you. I'm excited. Yes, amen. And so... You know, uh, after next week, we'll come back. So what we do is, you know, everybody rotates a time in hosting the call and where they share something that God has put on them just as I do. And um, and so everybody kind of gets a day as we go through a schedule. It takes about a month for everybody um, to do that. But we're we going to put you on rotation soon, honey. You just let me know if you're okay with that. Yeah, I'm down. That would, it's a, it would be a challenge. So like, you know, I feel like God wants us all, calls us all to evangelize yes. and speak. So yeah, I would love it. Awesome. 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 And Dierica, you too, madam. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. <laughs> I was typing in the group. I was typing in the chat. I was going to say, I'm ready for you, Natalie. Yeah. Then thank you. <laughs> since I didn't even have to type it, I'm ready for you, Natalie. Good, good, good. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, anybody else have anything else they want to share? Other than this was right on time. Amen. Literally, the dream that I just literally woke up. I should have probably never went to sleep about. <laughs> Back to sleep. But uh -huh. yeah. It literally, it lined up with this dream that I just had. I'm like, oh my wow. God. Wow. You were in a dream. Like, what the world? <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, listen, I, um, I, I am so, I'm definitely so excited about what God is doing as he continues to move us through and, you know, get us where we're going. And uh, so before we end up today, though, I do want to make sure that we formally welcome Miss Natalie, not only to the tribe, but to the team. She's now part of the movement as well. So we're proud of her. And, uh, she's part of the yes. Wainwright. Yes, part of the Wainwright crew. So <laughs> going to be the next RVP. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I'm already an RVP in spirit. Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You got the revelation. Yes. Yes. Right, yes. right. I love it. I love it. Well, y'all listen, it's been another great day. I'm excited. And um, we just, we, we continue to move forward from here. Give that devil a good old black eye for the rest of the day. Tell him, get out your way <laughs> and let's win it, right? <laughs> Amen. Well, we will see you guys um, on Monday and some of y'all on Saturday. Yep. All right. God be the glory. Blessings to you all. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. 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 Blessings. Do you want yeah. me to um, stay on or you want